Hi there, and welcome back. So let's get exploring Comfy UI. So in the previous videos, we show how to install Comfy UI, the Comfy UI manager, and also SDX, SDXL Turbo, which is mind blowing. So in this video, we're going to work again with SDXL Turbo, but now I'm going to show you the image to image workflow. Pre previous we work in the text to image. But before doing so, let's recap a little bit. So remember that you can install Confio. It's very straightforward. The interface is a little bit uh, intimidating, but the installation is, is extremely easy. We, it's just download and that's all and then configure something. Then you have Confio UI Manager that I strongly recommend recommend to install it and actually to use XDXL Turbo. You need to install the, the, this one because you need additional nodes. Uh, then also here, remember that in the, here you have a link uh, with some workflows, a specific workflow. So you have here some examples that are really good. That this is your starting point, and from here you can complicate things. Uh, how you can download this? So here you can download the image or sometimes a JSON file and just drag and drop here. So this is our default workflow, and from here we have we are expanding everything. So starting from this one, now let's say that I want to do the Excel Turbo. I already have my templates and in the video description you have the link for for instance the one that we did previously was this one text to image so it's very very similar to the previous one let me load the default so look at that in default load your checkpoint your model this model needs your prompt okay positive and negative then you have in this case that we have text uh this we create an empty latent space but if you have an image you have a a, a latent space where you read your image but the rest is pretty much the same and you can add prompts here the sampler in the in the sampler you get you connect to the model with the prompt and then you do all the magic here now to get your image then connect to the uh <clears throat> autoencoder the decoder part of the of the color here, the out encoder, and convert latent space to uh, pixel space and preview your image. Easy peasy, okay. Uh, for those interested in the theory, just go you now in if you are using a stable diffusion like and using here also you have the link and some explanations and some papers and so on but i don't want to go into details about it i'm going into that now because i want to use it for something very specific but the normal user that wants to generate image or get more control you don't need to go into too many details so this is your standard one then uh the extended one for xdl turbo look at that it's pretty much similar i changed now the position of the boxes a little bit but you need to rig your checkpoint remember to rig the checkpoint for sdl uh, sdxl turbo the, the one with sp16 extension and you have your prompt you connect it to the sampler but now the sampler is a custom sampler. Why is const custom sampler? Because you need to get access to these two options. This is a, a scheduler specific for SD Turbo. And this is why you need to have the latest version of Comfy UI, but also the Comfy UI manager. So if you go here, you double click here and you search Turbo. And if you don't see this, it means that it's not updated your installation. So you can go to the manager and update Comfy UI. If after updating, I'm not going to click because I have it all up to date. If after updating, you don't get it, uh, just download the latest version of, of Comfy UI. But that is very important to use as the Turbo Unique that. So this is the only the only difference and the rest is pretty much the, the same. So something important also using uh, Turbo is that don't save the image as you save the image because everything that you're going to do uh, is you have this and it's going to be safe and it can take a lot of space so just put a preview okay so it's when you get image preview and that's all and to remind you to show you what we're going to do so now we have this and it's interesting now in the website you have a few examples let me use what they use here and read what they have here you now because it's very important they mention here for instance text to image all these models you are using the turbo model is trained in this dimension. They claim that you can use larger 
not 10, 24, but honestly, in my personal experience, I don't get good results. So use this, and then you can use a, a scalar, which will be the next video. Also keep your CFG to one, okay, here, they mentioned zero, but probably the, this is in the Python stuff, but keep it to one. And then if you are using image to image, also you have this product here, the no, number of stats, times the strength, which is the, the noise, try to keep it one or more, okay, to get good results. And as I mentioned, you have a, a prompt here. So let's use this prompt here for the text. So as you put it here, Q, then usually when you read the first time the library, it will take some time and then everything goes and there you go. We have the results are super fast, as you can see. So this is SDXL Turbo in action. So remember, text to image, you need to use this new interface, then uh, CFG, keep it in one, and the number of steps, honestly, no more than five. I, in my personal experience, I did a lot of benchmarking, two is more than enough. But this product, this one times this one should be more than one to get the best results. And remember, always your latent space 512 to get the best results. So now let me go to this one. So we're going to move to the next workflow image to image, and I'm going to use this image. Okay, already generated. So this is the next example that you have here in their paper. So I just copy and paste this this description, this prompt, and I'm going to use this one to do image, image to image. So basically image to image, we use this image and then we can connect it to a prompt, but also to the sampler and you can modify. Okay. So you can get the same style or modify more of your image. So it's kind of very cool to do that. Okay. So this is it. Now let's move to the image to image, uh, image to image here. And this is it already load the image. So look at that. The workflow is pretty much the same. Uh, load your, your safe tensor, your library. So remember to load SDXL Turbo FP, FP16. And a reminder that to download that one just here in the website, just look for that one. Then files and versions and here you download. So as you saw, these are big files. Download this one and put it yeah, I put everything in automatic 11, 11, but it's up to you. So you have your library. So this is exactly the same as the default. Now look at here that we are not connecting anymore to the custom sa sampler. We can use the normal sampler with no problem. Okay. So here we're not taking uh, an anti latent space, our latent space, we have an image. Okay. So remember you load the image and just to show you everything latent image here. Let me go here and put there. You need to create a VI. Okay, so this is to convert the latent, the latent image, the pixels into latent space. So, and you put here and then you have low image and you can load your image. Okay, so easy peasy. It's just knowing. I think that's why it's very important to know how things are working and the steps and so on. So here I'm loading the image. So just click there and you can look for your image. So usually you put it here in the input folder. Here you convert, you go to the sampler and the sampler here works exactly the same way. Here you have again, latent space to pixel space and off you go. So let me click Q and see that reading the image. We have a prompt. This prompt is going to give some weight to the image. You use the same rules in the sampler and then you go get this. So basically what I'm doing is that taking this original image, remember that we generate this image, text to image, uh, SD tour, but, but you can use anything, but I want to do things fast. And now what I want to do is kind of keep the same style, but morph the image to something else. So see here now I morph it to a girl with glasses, long hair, and image style. So here you have my prompt. Okay, so as easy as this. So something that I have to mention that this is a very a big modification. Sometimes you can have problems in your image. And let me put it here. So look at that. They are quite different. So this image, when I morph from this to here to this, 
for sure you are going to have problems in the anatomy and uh, namely the hands so look at this hand here it's a little bit weird the hand and that can be a little bit tricky to control and some people tends to do to use the negative prone to control hands and so on so remember sdxl turbo doesn't read the negative prompt, but if you're using negative, you can use negative prompts and so on. So later we're going to talk about that. But honestly, I think that doesn't help much. Or as I already mentioned, that was more something the initial uh, models, today models, and they're going to get even better. That stuff is not going to be a problem. This negative is used for something else. Okay, so we have this, and to show you a little bit how to control what is happening, uh, the denoise level. So this is very important. And now we're denoising the image. So if you keep this denoise in 0 0.5, and let me redo this, pretty much you are not going to change your starting image, or you change it, but not much. So see that you have the glasses and so on. So if your goal is to keep the same image, but add some kind of, of noise in latent space, keep this one 0 0.5, and then you can increase a step so as you go here in steps you will see the, the difference and and sounds okay but see that you increase too many steps now you do the transition to this so you're giving a lot of weight to your prone if you keep it to one or two the, i like to use it too i want to remind you now again that i'm using xdl turbo if you use the standard one you can do the same but it will be a little bit more <laughs> time consuming. So this is a perfect case and invite you to play around with all these options and you will test the influence. But in general speaking, this is the idea 0 0.5. You keep the same starting image 0 0.6. You kind of give up more noise, more weight to your latent space here in the sampler and with the model, and then you morph to this. Okay. So now let's talk about this positive encoder. So actually it's not it's not compulsory to, to have you know, this problem. So why you can have an empty problem if I go and I generate my image, nothing here. And basically you are just modifying here, sampling from your model, using your sampler now to gather the information and you get this. Okay. And this is then again you can play with these options and you will see that you will get different results but now you are conserving a lot of the style of your starting image but i want to show you the importance of the positive from here okay and that the negative is not don't use the negative now to erase like hands and stuff background faces and things like that so just to show you what happens so i go i want a girl and look at how, how heavy the weight of this positive term prompt. So whatever you put here immediately will have an influence. Okay, gear, animate, style will have an influence on in your output image and you start to put it. So see that these two keywords, they are enough to change everything. Then try to keep no do prompt similar to your image or what you want. So try to capture the characteristic that you have there. So put keywords that can capture that. So for instance, let me add that I want uh, whew, glasses. Okay, so you put there, you have the glasses and hopefully we'll add glasses there. And there you go. So the other part of the prone, let me see. It was girl, long, black long hair so let me put it here black long hair coupon and then there you go so you start to see that you is each morph what it's a little bit strange you have those extra hands and artifacts okay let me put here a stand in Okay, so now it's sitting kind of in the tables. So I put it standing. You have it there. Much better. And see that now all those extra hands disappear here. And still you have one here. But my point here is that it's better to fix those strange features in the positive prone rather than putting negative prone. Because these negative prone, they don't have a, a heavy influence. It's quite tricky to, to solve those issues. 
using negative pronouns and sometimes the negative pronouns also they do change the, the, the style later we're going i'm going to show you not working with the turbo model because here is disabled that you will see that if you start to put those crazy prompts on let me go here that i have one and i find it super funny those 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 prompts like yeah like stuff like mutated hands mutation mutilated uh extra lean fingers no, a little bit <laughs> funny the keywords and honestly they didn't have such a heavy influence so my advice try to get it right in your positive prompt so let me go here and what i want to show you in this image so i have here now this is by the way this is a cherry picket case as you see i work it a lot to understand everything and since how, how it's working so here uh, 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 ta, 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 ta. this is the one that i'm using so let me go here and put it here look at that i'm putting just the keyword so you can put a complete sentence so here like a colorful 2d blender anime portrait whatever or you can put keyword by, by keyword i prefer to put keyword by keyword because then you can erase one and, and keep playing so let me go like this so look at that i'm going to put, put anime portray so anime is a very specific uh style so usually it will add a character so you have it there i mentioned about all these styles remember that you can download libraries here and i recommend cv ai is the place to go then you have hugging face also but here you have all those styles and just to mention that there are many anime styles and uh, well the people that train those models kind of are fixed with these female characters. It, it caught my attention, you know, that, that all female characters all around. Okay, that is the people training that. So, in any case, so see that we have anime portray, uh, portray, and um, then let me add here, then I want a girl with black long hair and glasses, cute there. And this is this is what I usually do. Okay, I like to work with the tool with super fast. I can get my prom right here, and then when you have a good prom, you can go to the full model and use the prom that you already prepared here, or you can use the image and retrain. So look at that here. Now we have this, and you have your extra hand here. So that's the thing I say that you can go on the full model and start those weird keywords in the negative but honestly it's quite difficult to to erase this one so it's better to get it in the right no in, in the positive prompt so here basically what we can do for instance i can say standing and maybe and let me put the auto cue here so auto cue this is also you get the auto cue only when you install the the manager so see that now is standing problem solved you don't have that extra hand then here probably you're going to have some extra fingers, but it's still you can work it out with the positive prompt. But let's say that I want it there in the table. Okay. So, okay, I didn't need it to, to do that. So how can I fix that? But well, probably I can say crossing arms. It didn't have much an influence, but I'll say writing. Okay, there you have closing hands. That was well, it was delay. Okay, but see the cross crossing hands, it have an influence now writing. And there you go. Much, much better. So now I can argue that this hands is not probably physically possible. Probably you try to scratch your elbow, your your shoulder, you can do it. But it's not very nice, but it's not a problem. You can get an idea that you can fix that with your prompt. It's extremely, the weight of this prone is really, really, really large. So use your positive prone to fix your image instead of focusing into the negative. And let me show you an example, probably have it here of that negative prone. Let me see if I have those two images. Uh, da, 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 da. Mm, I think now later when we work with the ox scaling, I will show you that. So that is to, to that negative prompt. You can use it to to fix a ray something added by the model when composing the image. So here we have the image, 
And this is our composition. So the main composition is this character. So putting a negative prone is not going to erase anything from your main character, your main composition. But maybe when creating this one, uh, reading here, maybe we'll add, let's say, a clock here. So you can say, erase that clock that you added that. So it's what is being added in the composition rather than what you have from from that composition or from what you have from this keyword so you put here a gear and then you say gear here yeah you cannot add, remove that because it's part of your composition okay so we have this is quite nice we have our image we work it out and then i invite you also to play with this so again my advice remember this is uh the turbo, the turbo, you don't need to do many steps, but here you can see the influence of this. So as you keep increasing, okay, more steps, the turbo doesn't work very well now as you keep adding more steps. So in my personal experience, five up to five, you can get good, good results. But see that now that is probably, yeah, probably can be okay for you, you know, I know, but personally speaking, the idea and all of the turbo also is just few steps generate good images. I would say something between two and four. Okay. Then the CFBE also, you can see the, the influence. So also look at that. You cannot add a two, a CFD too high because then you are going to oversaturate, but you can fix this probably increasing sampling uh, steps. Okay. So it is a combination. So here is a very nice tool that you can play with these combinations and you see the influence. It is the same effect using the standard model. So here is super fast, uh, super fast the standard model is slower. Also the standard models, the, 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 the values are higher, but the idea is the same, these combinations. So generally speaking, I would say keep your CFG 1, 1.1, 0 0.9. This example, cherry pick, I'm putting 1.1, but I would say one is okay. And this one too, we have this image and then we go here and you can play with the noise. So let's look at that. If I put 0 0.5, you keep your original image, the main features, and then it start to add what you put here in, in your prompt. So see that basically the, the most important feature that is put in of this prompt is the glasses. Okay. You have it there, did it morph to the gear and as you keep increasing you will see that 0 0.7 0 0.7 adds more noise and it gets farther and farther away from this style because basically you want to capture that style to morph to something like this and you can argue also that okay you can increase the steps and then you get closer but the idea you know i go back to this concept the idea is to keep the steps low to get very fast outcomes 0 0.6 and this is what we have and there you go we have our image okay simply we start from text to image and let me reproduce and remember that this is quite easy here so we go text to image i generated this prompt here cat wizard using sdxl turbo then here is the preview as i say i <laughs> try to, to bypass always the save image unless you want to save. So remember, right click and you have the option there. Okay. Then if you have the previews, you are happy, you can save the image. And from here, I move to the uh, image to image. Okay. We have this one. So image to image, it's pretty much very easy. You go here and read your image, convert it in a space, then the sampler which will mix the image with your model and your prompt and get your outcome. And there you go. Uh, let me disable the auto queue. Be careful with the auto queue. Always do not leave it on because otherwise it will be always keep running and it can give you problems. It will save, if you are saving images, it will save a lot of images, but then it can take you know, a, a big chunk of your video card memory. And there you go. We have the image. So at this point, Remember, all these images are 512. So very important, this XDXL Turbo was trained 512. So keep that same resolution. As you put larger, you might get, in some cases, good results, but personal experience uh, is not the case. Like for me, probably 70 or 80% of the time, I don't get good results. Some cases, I get good results. So for instance, I have this one. Let's do something funny because also we have uh, this prompt okay uh 
of the baby raccoon that is in the wet side, you know, that you get from here, they test this prone. So we can do something instead of using this girl here. Let me put that prone. So basically what I will do now, morph the cat to a baby raccoon in this specific style. And let's see what happens. And there you go. So this is very good work. Okay. I'm quite happy. So see that very easy, very fast, the tool one. Then when you move now to the full mobile, pretty much you're going to say, get the same outcome. It would be more time consuming, of course. If I put 0 0.5, you will try to keep this style. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's a, a smooth zoom. Now, there you, you are morphing in a very smooth way. So let me go 0 0.4. Let me put the auto there, generate. 0 0.1. So lowest, it keeps very close to that. Then you go 0 0.2. Okay. 0 0.2. Have that 0 0.3. And now you see that you start to morph. And probably you can get all these images and then you can do the animations you want to see the morphing and whatever. Same effect would be for with your full motor and 0 0.7. It is very heavy. Now this is very heavy. So as you recall, this is, this will be the output from the text to image. So avoid very high for me, 0 0.6. Remember that then you can play with CFG and so on. So that, that will have some influence and increasing here, but yeah, generally speaking, yeah, that's what is happening. So let me keep it 0 0.6. And there you go. So finally, to end here, let me put it again. You have it there, but I want to show you, okay, this is enabled. See that if you leave it enabled every time, it's going to start to do everything. So I'm happy with this. You can save this image and then you can do some upscaling of this image that that will be our next video. So I just want to show you what will happen there because now that you have everything, remember low resolution, you have you can go high resolution and I have this workflow here and look at that. I'm reading exactly the same image. So you can go always load, you load the image. So here you have image loader, look for the image and basically where just load the image, then connect the image to an aux scaler. So here and aux scaling the image to, uh, in, pixel space. I'm not going to latent space. So I'm doubling the image here. So I'm using this scaler. If you don't have this scaler, you will need to install that. So in the manager you have here and you can look for scale scalers and you have, okay. And the wrong place. Okay. It's model. Ox scaler and you have many ox scaler so you can install those there so ox scaling two times so this is 512 now it will be 1024 and using a full mod so this i don't need any model everything is in this ox scaler and then and probably you will see that this is a little bit different from previous that everything is compact so later i'm going to show you how to do this because now you can put it in, in in order so look at that let me click here and see that convert to notes. So basically what I did, all those notes that probably you're already familiar, you can convert everything. So you select everything with control, all the notes, and you can right click group now, and you give it a name. So let me call it GT and there you go. So this is how you can simplify your interface. So later I'm going to show you that then you have the group. So everything it is kind of no, you post everything here is attached to this group and then you can, this group, you can just bypass the whole group or you can, uh, or you can turn it on. So it's very helpful. This is tough. And also here you have this stuff, the positive, negative prompts and so on that I separated. Okay. So I will show you how to do that later. So this is just to put things in order. So likely sometimes when you download and let me go back to see with AA. Uh, sometimes when you download something from CVIT AA, you're going to get, so see that you have works Confi UI, so you can look for that and you can get you no know, works workflows here. 
So when you download some workflows here, you will see that are super complicated or you will have the impression that they're complicated. But basically what you're doing, what they're doing is that they're collapsing everything into a single you no know, tab and that's all. Okay, so and let me run this case later. We talk about in details what is happening here. So let me go QPROM. Okay, so load the image, then this image has been upscale pixel space and now convert it to latent space, use a model and look at that I'm using this model here and it's going to do an scaling of this image using this model. You will expect as previously that now it's going to add some noise. It's going to be slightly different because you are getting the model and it's the concept is the same. So see that 0 0.6 and the image is slightly different. Okay. But keeping the same feature. So let me go and zoom in here. So see that this is your image. See that the resolution here, you have some pixelation. So when you do the ox scale in pixel space, look at that. And now you have more sharpness here. And to avoid those pixels, it will add some information. So this is the thing that sometimes at the beginning with the first ox scaler, I didn't like because the information that it was adding, it wasn't too good. But now these upscalers are, are getting really, really good. And to show you something that I have here, an image. And let me go here. That this one here, upscaler, you know, talking about that. And this is what is happening. So basically you get this. So if you want to increase, uh, then you have this pixelation, but then the scaler will add some extra information here. Okay. So this is, this is, this, this is very, very impressive. Very cool. So this is what happening here. So now I scale to two, two times. Be careful. Also do not add very aggressive of scaler. So here you have different scaler for X, a X and so on. So if you put a X, when you pass to latent space, which is not compulsory, okay. So you can stop here. This is a big file. It will use a lot of memory. So be careful about that. So I, I, my personal experience, 2x is enough. Then you go here, latent space. Here also you can upscale that. So it will be the same concept. You multiply by two, it will start to get expensive. So here I will put the same image, 1024, and then apply this model. And this is a very good result. Very impressive. And look at that. The hand here, we know from the turbo that is a problem, but look at that by just controlling my prompt, you can fix the issue of your hands. And here now your prompts, okay, are positive, you know? So just to show you, are, are, these are positive and negative and they're enabled. And now you can control this negative prompt. So look at that. Let me show you something. I generate this image and this original image, not this one, if I do everything and I don't put a smile there, this is what we have. So I'm losing that big smile. So if you want to keep that, put there a smile and you're going to have. Then issues that you will identify here, you can control and my advice, try to fix any issue in your image in the positive prompt. So he, it seems like extra fingers, back, anatomy, stuff like that. Personal experience not going to work. Okay, maybe you will be lucky enough that it's going to erase something, but it's not going to, to work. And you will see when you start to do that, it will change the style. So look at that. Now my style is a little bit different. So if I erase this, keep on. My style, you will see the difference in, in the styles. Okay. It didn't have that heavy influence in this case, but if you add many, you will see. And then you have embeddings. So this will be part of the next video, what we're doing here. So you have that template also. So here I put some comments and talking about that, how you, if you want to get the original image, get your, your, your denoise to 0 0.5 and so on. So in the next video, we play with that, but there you go. So you have the XDXL turbo, which I recommend you just to, to, to adjust, to use that one, to adjust your, your prompt. It is fantastic. So that is how I proceed. I do everything in turbo, adjust everything. And then when you have 
your good prom or you have a good image move to the full model so that's all for this video thank you for your attention see you next time bye